What? Yes, yes, I know, I know. I said I'd get to this next, but... The newest Five Nights at Freddy's game came out. I know I'm not the biggest fan, but I've been reviewing the series so far. Uh, I gotta talk about this first, guys. But when I'm done with this, I'll get to this. I promise you. I know not all of you are Five Nights at Freddy's fans, but guess what? I do have a few subscribers who are. So, yes, needless to say, I'm going to be taking a look at Five Nights at Freddy's Ultimate Custom Night. Thankfully, there's not much to look at. Originally, this was DLC, or at least it was announced as DLC from what I can remember, as Pizzeria Simulator, and I was thinking about taking a look, maybe skipping it out, but no, now it's its own game, which, I mean, I guess is fine, but... Yeah, it's just his own game now, so naturally, I had to take a look. Thankfully, there's not too much in the way of plot or other things, like level design. So, this ought to be pretty quick. So, let's get through and let's take on Ultimate Custom Night. I couldn't come up with a quirky little title, so that's all you get. Sorry. Just... Just roll the starting thing already. So there isn't much in the way of plot. Uh, we're not sure if this is canon or not, but it seems like you're playing as once again Michael Afton. And you're in some type of version of hell? Maybe? I'm not sure. There's hints that this is Golden Freddy's doing, and there's hints that this is the puppets doing. So, I'm not really sure what the hell is causing all of this, but there's definitely some weird things and secrets and side quests, but that's the plot out of the way. Characters? There's about 50 of them. Actually, there's more than 50 of them, but I'll get to that later, too. More or less, it's just the Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics that you all know and love. What's pictured here is where it is. That, that's it. That's all. You got some of the more original animatronics, like the original cast of characters and the toy animatronics, but then it's kind of hit and miss on some of the other ones. Like, yeah, there's Withered Bonnie and Withered Chica, but no Withered Foxy or Freddy? Eh, not that that's all that important to the gameplay here. And let's talk about the gameplay for a second, shall we? Because that's where most of the entertainment value is going to come from this. This is literally Five Nights at Freddy's the Arcade Edition. You can pick and choose any way you want. There's no levels to kind of meander through. There's nothing like that, actually. There's no level progression. This is just custom night from beginning to end. How hard or easy it is depends on you. All the animatronics do different things. Yeah, sure, there's the side doors, which some animatronics come through and some are affected by the doors. Some can pass right through the doors if you don't have their particular stuffed animal purchased. Off the prize counter of all freaking things. But, yeah, you have the doors, you have some of the vents, which there's three animatronics coming through that bottom side vent, most of which are related to Balloon Boy, or Afton. And then you have the top vent, which you have a camera for, and there's snares to block some of that up, but there's also the vent door. If you hear or see an animatronic coming through that door, close it, you're safe. And then you have the vent system, or a similar vent system from Pizzeria Simulator, which didn't need to come back in my opinion, but hey, there you go. And that's pretty much it. All of the uh, animatronics that you can buy from, well, not all of them, but most of the animatronics that you can buy from Pizzeria Simulator to build in your pizzeria actually show up in these vents, and when they kill you, they have some hilarious dialogue. So, yeah, all in all, does the gameplay work? Sure, it works for the most part. Um, the problem would, of course, be is that if you have all of them set to 20, Things get a little chaotic. Is it even possible to beat that mode? Uh, 
I'm not sure quite yet at the time of making this video, but yeah, it's there. Um, not really too much else to talk about. Um, a lot of the animatronics are specialty animatronics. For example, Foxy, you want to keep an eye on him so he doesn't get into your office. He can't run anymore for some odd reason, but he'll just throw his pieces of himself into your office and once he's there, you can't really get rid of him. However, for some reason, Bonnie's in there too, and if you look at Bonnie, he's embarrassed to be there, I guess, so he just kind of messes up your camera. So that's kind of odd. Funtime Foxy has a particular showtime, and if you don't tune into uh, his showtime on the camera at the exact time, you die. And then there's some animatronics in your room that react to noise, some react to your flashlight, some require you to pay them coins. There's a huge menagerie of characters, but the nice thing is is that each character is typically doing something a little different. Besides like the several in the vent, which even then some of those are doing something different, the only characters that are really the same are Baby, Nightmare Mangled, and Nightmare Bonnie, who you need to buy a prize from the prize corner to defeat them. If you have more than one coming at you, you basically have to buy the stuffed animals in a particular order or else they're probably going to kill you anyway because you don't have the right stuffed animal at the right time. But other than that, all the animatronics do something totally original. You got the Rockstar animatronics from Pizzeria Simulator, you have some of the Nightmare animatronics, some of the Withered animatronics, all of the toy and regular animatronics. And you have a lot of the sister locations, some of the phantom ones. Honestly, it's fun. I know, that's weird coming from me because I'm not the biggest fan of the point and click horror genre. But this, that's ah, harmless. It's fun. It's, you know, you can do whatever you want, really. And 50 20 mode, as ridiculous as it is, isn't necessarily the worst time either. How about them secrets and side quests, though? Are there a whole lot of hidden goodies, hidden lore? There's a bit of hidden lore here and there with some of the character dialogue. Um, the thing that you're going to be looking for the most, however, is if you get enough points, one, you can get different offices. It's just cosmetic, sure, but it looks nice. And two, you can unlock the Five Nights at Freddy's anime! It's about as hilariously off the wall as it sounds, but it's funny. I enjoy it. You got um, the fight between the Bear Clan and the Fox Clan, of course, and uh, Yandere Chica, or Toy Chica. Yeah, that's a weird one. And, of course, there's some hidden secrets here and there about some of the character deaths, including Golden Freddy, and there's a few secret characters that you can uh, unfortunately run into thanks to Dee Dee. Dee Dee's this mechanic that basically, randomly, this Dee Dee animatronic thing will come in and pop in a new player. Sometimes it's one of the lists from the 50s. Sometimes she'll just change the AI of the character and make it harder. And naturally, sometimes she will summon a completely and utterly different character that you have no idea how to deal with until you're dead. It's a kind of a pain in the butt. So, unfortunately, that's probably the best and the worst thing about Custom Night, if you will. The ultimate Custom Night is that Dee Dee sometimes can be a little annoying, especially when you're trying to go for some of the secrets or if you're just trying to do 50-20 mode and you end up doing 51 or 52-20 mode or whatever. She can be kind of a pain in the ass. Luckily, there's items that you can unlock to help you with certain things, like starting out with three Fazbear coins, eliminating Diddy, Didi for the entire night, Diddy. <laughs> We're not talking about Smash Brothers yet. That will probably be in the next vlog that I do. But yeah, you can eliminate Didi for a night. You can have the uh, office start out at like 50 degrees. 
Um, then you gotta keep it that way, because some characters naturally will attack you based on heat. It's a pain. There's so much to keep track of. But again, if you don't necessarily put too many animatronics into the fray, it's fun and fairly decent to manage. And yes, some of the harder difficulties may be near impossible, but they might actually be impossible. That doesn't necessarily make this any less fun. The fun is trying to survive as long as you can on some of these, which with how much there is to manage, can be a bit tricky at times. So, yeah. What do I, how do I recommend a series like this? How do I recommend this game? Is this the definitive facto Five Nights at Freddy's game? Yes and no. Part of the fun of Five Nights at Freddy's is, of course, the story. There's, you know, bits and pieces of lore, and while that's highly debatable, some people don't really care much for the story of Five Nights at Freddy's. Some people think it's just randomly pieced together, and some people think it's really intricate. But, there's not much here of that. There's bits and pieces, of course, for those who are just theory hungry of, you know. But, um, yeah. For the most part, there's only a little bit. This is mostly FNAF gameplay from beginning to end. It's arcade-like in its structure. Um, so can I recommend it? The answer is, of course I can. It's free. If you ever wanted to try out the FNAF series and you wanted a place to start, this is free. This is where the gameplay is, and... Well, it might not be the best gameplay out of the entire series, it's not half bad. It's definitely a step up from Pizzeria Simulator, though every game is a step up from Pizzeria Simulator, but that game is free too, so it's kind of hard not to recommend that either. If you're curious about the series, give it a try, just because you can kind of feel how the gameplay is. Although a lot of the animatronics do work differently in this game, not all of them do. Some of them are very similar to how they work in their previous games. So, if you like the gameplay, and you're a little bit curious about the lore, this is a good jumping point into other games, because you don't pay a dime for this. And because you can set the difficulty at whatever you need to, to kind of get used to how things work, it's very beginner friendly, because you choose the challenge. So, like I said, quick, easy, there you go. That's my review on Ultimate Custom Night. And I will work on that Anarchy Reigns review as quickly as I possibly can. July is going to be a bit busy for me, guys. Um, I got a few things going on in my personal life. So, you might see a few vlogs just to kind of keep you guys up to date. And, I, you know, vlogs about specific topics, of course. But, um, yeah, I'll work on that review as quickly and, and as effectively as I possibly can. Until then, adios. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>